Sure looks like he was made for the moment in game two against the Clippers. But what else is new, right? Luka averages nearly 35 points per game in the playoffs following a loss. That's the highest mark, by the way, in NBA history. But Shanae, we saw Luka do something he has never done really in all of his career. What was that? That's right, Malika. We all know about the offense. I mean, game two was Luka's 30th playoff game, and only Michael Jordan and Wilt Chamberlain have scored more points through their first 30 playoff games. But it was what he did on the other side of the ball that truly stood out. Defense, let's run the tape. Now, he guarded nine different players, and I'm going to show you the key three. James Harden walked into this matchup 28 and 8. He held them to one of five. Now let's go to the second leading scorer, Paul George. Luca, no double necessary, no help on an island, held Paul George, who averaged in the regular season 22 points per game to 0 of 1. But this right here was the most important because Kawhi, this was his first time back in the postseason in this game. He held him to 0 of 2. I've seen Kawhi Leonard win games with shots like this. Watch this. He's going to turn around. Typically, there's no help. He can get a clean look. Instead, Luka Doncic held him to 0 of 2 and was committed to contesting the shots. Y'all, Luka held the Clippers to this number. Two of 17 shooting when he was the primary defender. And LA went 0 for 11 when Doncic was able to commit and contest the shot. And again, y'all, he guarded nine different players. He did say quite casually, oh, you know, this is what I do. But Luca, we know your hands are full offensively. But for them to win and be successful yep. in the postseason, he's got to buy in on both ends. And it's like we're starting to see that. Not to mention when he had that clutch shot down the stretch, he was doing a little bit of everything. It's crazy to say this about a guy who dropped 70, Kendrick, earlier in the season. But that might have been the best all-around game of Luka Doncic's career there. What does it mean for the Mavericks if he's able to realize his full potential this postseason? It means that they got him one. That in the near future, I'm not saying now, that they could possibly can win the title. If you get this version of Luka Doncic, first of all, he's unstoppable offensively. We know what he's going to do. He led the league in scoring. We know how valuable he is when it comes down to making guys around him better. Mm. We know he's an excellent rebounder at the point guard position. But if you have Luka sliding those puppies and defending the way that he's doing right now, I'm not saying this year, but absolutely they can win the title led by Luka. Because let me explain something to you. When you're in the locker room and you're doing your scout, you're saying, you know what? We got to make Luca guard. That's we're going to try to take some energy away from his offensive end and make him guard. But all the greats rose to the occasion. Mm -hmm. Think about Steph. Think about Steph Curry. The last championship he won, the Boston Celtics. They tried to pick on him. True. We saw him battling Al Horford in the post. Yes. Right. Luca is mentally engaged. Shout out to Jay Kidd and shout out to Kyrie Irving with his leadership. Mm -hmm. But if the Mavs continue to get this version of Luca, this year they're going to go to the conference. That was a good point. Oh, next year they're going to, next year or the year to come. NBA Finals Championship. All right, so that's the oh, Dallas no. Mavericks side of all of things. I do want to get to the Clippers side of this because their offense, it really sputtered in game two. They've been trending that way when healthy, right? In the last 10 games, Kawhi has played in. They've gone just 5-5 five and five while scoring 109 points a game. They went 39-20 and 20 when he scored 117 with Kawhi on the court before this stretch. So Kawhi described their offense, Shanae, in that last game as stagnant. And really, it was their worst shooting performance of the season. How can they figure it out on that end? Into the floor. Well, they have the tools. And I would say before, I would be very, very concerned about the Clippers because of that type of performance, especially mm -hmm. given that you're starting at home. But I think oftentimes we see uncharacteristic losses when right. they integrate new pieces to their squad. There's that rust factor. There's the rust factor. I mean, we talked about the James Harden in the regular season six games. Kawhi Leonard, the benefit, the reason why I'm not panicking just yet, even though Luka Doncic has been lethal, is because they had enough continuity, 50 or so games, with this core so that when Kawhi comes back, a lot of people are looking at those 15 points and they're like, oh, that's not enough to beat the squad. Kawhi is a slow burner. He's not a popcorn machine. He's like, what is it, slow roast <laughs> yeah. in the oven? Like, no. he can build throughout a series to the point where he can kill you in advance. You just have to still be in that series Correct. by the time he's And you can't give enough ammo to the other side. And I do think that there were good things on Kawhi. They have the pieces, they have the continuity, and they also have that guy. Well, y'all call it Russ, I call it trust when it comes down to the Clippers. So many ball dominant guys. Who, which guy is going to sacrifice, right? Which guy is going to sacrifice? You need one. 